Okay, so now that everybody has mastered um, centering, now we're going to try throwing. So this uh, throwing a cylinder is the foundation of most things that you're going to make on the wheel. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you how to open a cylinder and then throw it, which is the act of pulling it upwards. And, uh, and I'm going to do that a few times. I have, you know, three balls of clay, four balls of clay ready here. And uh, I'm going to go through these and then, um, and then hopefully you'll get a better sense of, of what's actually happening um, with my hands. Um, okay, let's get started. So throwing, uh, I mentioned that centering, you want the wheel going relatively fast. This is another, um, this is another time where I think having the foot pedal when you're just beginning to have the foot pedal not be controlled by your foot and uh, I've seen this a lot with beginners where they're so focused on the act of throwing that they're forgetting what their foot's doing and then they end up going so fast and you know the, the gas pedal gets you know pressed faster and faster and then they they ruin the whole project as a result of going too fast. So having the option of setting your uh, speed and then forgetting about it is a really good option until you're more familiar with being able to adjust the nuances of speed for different, different parts of uh, throwing. But for this, making a cylinder, and for the sake of learning, I'm going to say if you can, take your foot pedal, put it to the side, and have it go sort of on the slower side of halfway. Okay, so I have it spinning at a you know fairly good, fairly good pace. But where that was full speed, I'm gonna have it going about there. Okay. So just because this has been sitting here for a little while, I'm going to. Up, release pressure, change the position of my hands, add pressure, push it back down. Now I want to be able to push this down to about the diameter that I want the base of my cylinder to be. Okay? It's going to vary a little bit, but this, you know, generally speaking, is how wide my cylinder is going to be that I'm going to make with this ball of clay. So I'm going to take my left hand. I still have my left hand sort of always shouldered into my uh, to my hip at this point. And I'm going to take this thumb and I'm going to press it down right in the center. And I'm going to go down all the way until I not reach the bottom, but I have about maybe a quarter of an inch from the bottom. Okay. So uh, how do I know it's a quarter inch from the bottom? It just comes from practice, but I'm going to show you a method that uh, that you can use in order to practice that until you get the hang of, of, of how deep that's going to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thumb, and you can see I have my right hand here, and I'm just sort of helping it along, pressing it into that plate. So once I get to the bottom, or where I think the bottom is, once again, releasing pressure. Anytime you're going to change directions as well, you want to release pressure, okay? So, I've pressed my thumb down in there, I've released pressure, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that thumb and I'm going to drag it outwards, it's stretching that, that hole open, okay? So i got my thumb, i got this hand sort of pushing on that thumb, I'm going to drag it open, Okay. When I get to where I want it to be, I'm going to stop, I'm going to release pressure, and I'm going to release my hands. Okay, so at this stage, I'm going to stop it right now. At this stage, I want to see how deep my bottom is. I could tell right away that this is a little bit on the thick side, but uh, for the sake of the demo, I'm going to show you a, a, a little way that you can um, adjust for thickness at this stage. For that, for that, you're going to need your needle tool, okay? So your needle tool, I'm going to take this, I'm going to press it right in the center, 
I'm going to put it in and I'm going to slide my finger down until it touches the clay and I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to see that I got about a half inch so I could go a little bit deeper. I don't want it to be a bottom that's that thick. So I got about a half inch of, uh, of thickness there. So I'm going to get started again. Okay. Now at this stage, now where this hand for the centering, my left hand, has always been on the outside at this point. So at this stage now, I'm going to make a switch. So my left hand is now going to be on the inside. So my left hand is going to be at relatively, you know, between 4 and 5 o'clock. And my right hand is going to be outside at around that same time. Okay? So my left hand is going in the middle. I'm pressing down, you know, roughly a quarter inch. And then I'm going to drag that hole open. Okay? And now I'm going to take a little bit of time and just spend some time at the bottom there, pressing down, compressing the bottom. Okay? So I'm just pressing down. I'm not trying to make any kind of big gouge, but I want to make sure that that bottom is compressed. Now this is really, really important for any kind of cylinder. Because what's happening is, when you put your hand in and you're dragging that cylinder open, you're pulling those clay particles away from one another. And it might not look like much there, but in the drying process, those particles are going to remember that they've been pulled apart. So what happens is, you often get what's called an S crack. Okay? So those particles have memory. And as they dry, they're going to they're gonna want to pull apart again. And then you're going to get a crack every time. So to avoid that crack, it's really important that you kind of erase the memory of those clay particles and compress the bottom. Now, you, I often just use my finger, and I go back and forth from the middle to the edge. But another thing that you can use is one of your ribs. Pressing down with the rim. Okay? Holding it there for a few seconds, releasing pressure, releasing my hand. Okay, so now I have a compressed bottom, this big fat rim, a little bit thicker on the bottom, and then it's coming to get a little bit thinner up top. So now what I want to do is I want to take some of this bulk here and I want to bring it upwards. Okay? So the action is going to be. This hand is going to be on the inside. I'm going to make a little bit of a, a divot. And then this hand on the outside is going to be pushing that clay up and in towards it. And then I'm going to just drag it upwards. So the positions of my fingers will be roughly like that. Okay? So this hand is pushing the clay up and in towards this hand. And this hand is stabilizing it and gauging where that cylinder is going to be. You might want to put a little bit of water in there. You never want to see water pool at the bottom. So always take a moment, if you see water really starting to pool at the bottom, just take your sponge and then soak that up. Some people like to hold their sponge in their hand, which I find very useful because if I need, if I find that the clay starts grabbing at my finger, I can just kind of give it a squeeze and water will fall onto my hand and lubricate that area. Okay, so, I'm making a gouge on the inside. This outside hand is pushing that clay up and in towards my inside hand. As I get to the top, now I don't, wanna, I don't want the rim to be too thin at this point because I have a long way to get up still. So at, the, at this stage, I'm going to release pressure, release my hands, Take a moment to compress that rim. Okay. Now, I find that when people are learning to, uh, to throw a cylinder, what's happening is they're adding pressure at the bottom, they're trying to get rid of that bulk, and they're, at, they're, they're keeping that same amount of pressure all the way up to the top. And so what happens is, you're going to get a cylinder that gets really thin up top, and is still very thick at the bottom. So, as I get to the top, I'm sort of releasing pressure, 
and not putting as much pressure and then compressing that rim so it doesn't get too thin. Okay, so I'm going to do that one more time. A little bit of lubrication on there. Now, at this stage you'll see, rather than using my finger, because I have fairly long fingers, I find it, uh, I, I find I like to use the edge of my knuckle for my outside hand. But essentially it's serving that same purpose. So I'm pushing in, I'm pushing up and in towards this finger, which is acting as a guide for the inside wall. And you can see that ridge on the outside going up. That wide side of the ridge is actually my inside finger pressing against the clay. Get to the top, release pressure, release my hands, and compress the top. So as you can see when I'm compressing the top, I'm holding the edges here, and then I'm using this finger, and I'm pushing down. Okay? So now you can see the bottom is starting to get around the same thickness as the top. Okay? I probably have one more pull to sort of even out those walls. Same thing, outside hand pushing up and in towards my inside hand, and then they're coming up together. So you'll notice my left hand, I have my thumb touching my right hand. Now the reason why I have that is so that my hands work symbiotically. So that they're not independent of one another. They kind of work as one unit. So my inside hand is pushing the clay up and in towards or my outside hand pushing up and in towards my inside hand. Get to the top, compress the top. Okay, so there we have a, a basic cylinder. Another thing I want to do here, um, I have the walls relatively thick, or relatively the same uh, thickness. I want to put my sponge in there and get rid of any of that excess water that's pooling at the bottom. Now that's pretty key because what happens is, as this is drying, because this is thin and air is passing over the top of it, this ridge is going to dry so much quicker than the bottom. And then so if you have water at the bottom of your, of your cylinder, it's going to stay wet for even longer. And then so the difference between this drying and that drying could also cause cracking and you can also get what to once again it's an S crack at the bottom as a result of that. So you always want to make sure before you're pulling your cylinder off your, your wheel that, uh, that you have no sitting water in the, um, in the, in the cylinder. Okay, so I'm just going to even this out again. So outside hand, pushing up and in towards my inside hand gradually bringing it up. So you'll also notice that my arm, my right arm, is tucked into my side. So I'm actually using the stability of my core to stabilize my hands. If I was out here and I was just trying to hold my arms, you know, these arms are working very independently from one another and it's very difficult to keep that steadiness that is critical when you're working on the wheel. So I, you'll often see that I'm sort of pulling my arms in and sort of wedging them against my body and using my body as a stabilizer to move my hands up and down. So I'm getting up to the top, releasing pressure, releasing my hands, compressing the top. Now at this stage, you could take one of your ribs. Some people like to, this one's a little tricky for beginners because it's so sharp. And so what, ha what I find happens sometimes before you get the hang of it, this will sometimes stick to the clay, whip around, and you can cut your hand. Um, so a lot of beginners will, will use something like this, which is a wooden rib. And I mean, this isn't just for beginners, but it, I find it's, really, it's a little bit more forgiving. Getting rid of some of that bottom clay. And now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to use this in lieu of my outside hand, my knuckle. So I'm, I have a little bit of pressure on the inside hand pushing out towards this rib 
the rib is at a slight angle and I'm pulling it up to the top and I can feel the rib through the clay with my inside hand. So I'm actually pushing my finger towards the edge of this rib and that's kind of getting rid of any of this slip on the outside and smoothing out that cylinder. Okay, so once again, bringing it up. I'm feeling the rib on the outside. I'm getting to that top, releasing pressure, releasing my hands, compressing the top. Okay, um, a chamois. So this is a chamois, which is just kind of a little piece of leather. Um, this is a great tool for smoothing out that rim. So I grab it with both hands and I kind of stretch it over the rim and I push down and I kind of just gently press on the, the rim of that, the, of that cylinder. Let it go around a few times, release the pressure, release my hands, and there you have a cylinder. So, uh, I've made sure that there's no water in the bottom. Once again, I'm going to just take this sponge to make sure that it's nice and dry down there. Okay, get rid of any slip along the inside. And now what I'm going to do is I want to try to get this off the wheel head. So when you do that, you always want to make sure that you have a wear board close by. You don't want to carry this across the room. So I'm going to stop for now. I'm going to get my wear board. This is another great thing about this wheel, it's got these little tables close by. I'm going to have my wheel go around a few times. Now I'm going to take my wooden knife and I'm going to take the sharp end of that wooden knife and I'm going to angle it in towards the bottom and I'm going to just sort of tilt it so that it's acting as a plow. So I'm going to be able to go into the side of that bottom and it's, the clay is going to come at it like this and sort of scoop and scrape away from the edge. Okay, so you can see that that's scraped away. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it down and I'm going to tilt it this way so that when that clay comes and hits it, it's going to peel away from the vessel. Okay, so there we have it. Now I have a little bit of room to grab onto it. I'm going to take my cutoff wire. I'm going to hold it in both hands. And I'm going to take my thumbs and as I'm holding it like this, I'm going to press my thumbs down tight on the wheel head and pull it towards me. Okay? Some people actually like to put a little bit of water on the wheel and sort of pull that water underneath the, uh, underneath the vessel. And you'll find like when you're learning, you're probably going to use a lot more water than I have. So there'll be water everywhere and this will be a lot softer so it'll be even harder to pick up. But before I pick this up, I want to make sure that my hands are wiped dry and clean because right now I don't want to get any extra fingerprints on here. So I got my wear board ready to go. I have my my towel at the ready. I'm going to dry my hands off so that they're nice and dry and clean. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to try to maximize the surface area with my hands. Give it a slight twist, right? And then drop it down and let go. So that's it. Now I'm going to let it get uh, to what's referred to as the leather hard stage. I'm going to get to that later. And uh, that is throwing a cylinder. So you've just thrown your first few cylinders and um, you're really proud of them. And, uh, and you think that you've done a great job and you're ready to fire them. However, I'm going to put the brakes on there. I don't think, I think, um, that your first cylinders, and we're talking first hundred cylinders, you should think of not as a precious object or even a complete form, but think of it more as a learning tool and uh, a way that you could dissect it in order to get better, okay? So what I'm gonna do here, I would highly suggest that you do it yourself to some of your, uh, your first cylinders and um, and that way you could kind of see what's happening 
on the inside. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to slice this right down the middle, right to the bottom, slice it off, and open it up. So this is what you're looking at. You're basically looking at a relatively flat bottom with a fairly even thickness. You can see I'm a little bit thicker on the edges here. Um, a relatively even thickness wall and uh, a compressed bottom and uh, fairly uniform all the way up. Okay, so this is, if you can get this, you're well on your way to understanding how to do some more advanced forms. So I'm going to take this opportunity to show you what is actually happening with my hands when I'm in the process of throwing. So when I'm throwing, as, I, as you've seen, we start with kind of more or less a disc on the wheel head that turns into a donut. And then from that donut, I'm taking that, that thicker clay at the bottom and I'm bringing it up, dragging it up towards the top and then compressing that top. Okay, so when I'm pulling that clay up towards the top, I have my outside hand pushing up my inside hand. So you can see that my left hand, my inside hand, is slightly above where my outside right hand is. And that right hand is pushing that clay up and in towards my inside hand, which is guiding that form. Okay, so if my inside hand is pushing out and my outside hand is pushing towards it, I'm going to get a form that is more of a bowl shape form. So a form that's more open. If I'm doing the opposite, my outside hand is doing a lot more pushing and my inside hand is moving in, I'm going to get a more conical shape. Okay, so another thing to consider is you may have noticed when I was on the wheel and I was throwing, I had my inside hand touching my outside hand. And the reason for that is they don't necessarily have to be touching, but whenever I have the opportunity to have my hands locked together to form sort of a unit, I'll do that. And the reason why is because rather than each hand moving independently all the way up, when they're touching, they move together as, as a unit and you're going to find it a lot easier to have your hands move together rather than separately from one another. So I hope that helps out and uh, keep on trying. <laughs>